Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. In today's paper, we will review a recent paper on lifespan with rapamycin and trametinib, which showed a longer extension than other rapamycin combinations have shown with the ITP. Before we dive into today's video, we are happy to let you know that we've launched a Patreon page. It's a great way to support our channel in sharing the latest information on longevity and health span. Please check it out and consider signing up. Thank you for your support. Rapamycin has been shown to extend lifespan and health span in various model animals, including mice. As well as rapamycin, there are other drugs which have shown some ability to extend lifespan. Can these be combined in an additive way? This is the question that this paper set out to test using trametinib and rapamycin singularly and in combination. Please note that this is currently in bioarchive, so has not been peer reviewed yet. We are not going to go in, into depth into the biochemistry, but at a very high level view, here is where rapamycin and trametinib fit in. The insulin IGF-1, mTORC-1, RAS pathway is a conserved nutrient sensing network. The various pathways have extensive crosstalk between them. Rapamycin, the more well-known of the molecules, has so far shown the most consistent and robust life extension in mice and other model animals. Its primary mode of action is to inhibit mTORC-1, one of the mTORC complexes. Activation of mTORC-1 puts the cell in growth mode and inhibits autophagy. So rapamycin is reducing growth and allowing autophagy to become active to clean up the cell. Trametinib inhibits MEK, which is on the pathway from RAS to ERK. ERK is short for extracellular signal regulated kinase. And if you watch the video on interleukin-11 inhibition, it was one of the active proteins in that process as well. ERK acts as an activator of mTORC1, so inhibiting it also downregulates mTORC1. However, ERK has multiple functions, one of which is to migrate into the nucleus where it affects the transcription of growth and cell division genes such as CMEK. So inhibiting MEK is reducing cell growth and replication. Pathways are complex and interact with each other. The authors hypothesize that inhibiting cell growth in two branches of the network may have an additive effect. Trametinib is an anti-cancer drug approved for use in skin and brain cancers. It has been shown to extend lifespan in flies. It's also known by its trade name, Mechanist. In terms of dosing, both interventions were given in the chow, and the paper gives the dose as milligrams per kilogram of chow. Based on this, I've used the following parameters to calculate the actual doses. My seat, four to five grams of chow a day. So I have used 4.5 grams. Both male and female mice were used and their weights change with age. But I have gone with 25 grams as a middle number. So to convert from milligrams per kilogram of chow to milligrams consumed, I've divided by a thousand as the amount of food eaten is in grams, not kilograms, and multiplied by 4.5 for the number of grams eaten. To get the milligrams per kilogram of body weight, we need to perform the gram to kilogram conversion in reverse, then divide by the body weight. Finally, I've used the allometric conversion of 12.3 to go from mouse to human. As always, please note that the conversions to human are just to give some idea of what the dosing is and are not in any way a recommendation. For rapamycin, the dose was 42 milligrams per kilogram of chow, which meant that the mice were eating about 0.189 milligrams or 7.56 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. For humans, this would convert to about 0.61 milligram per kilogram or 45 milligrams for a 75 kilogram person. The rapamycin was given on alternate weeks. This dose is quite high. Rapamycin is not approved for longevity, so there is no official dose, but the commonest number that I have seen is around five to seven milligrams once per week. Even as an immunosuppressant, it is around 40 milligrams per day. The rapamycin dosing was based on results from previous mouse studies. Trametinib was given at 1.44 milligrams per kilogram of chow. 
There were no earlier mouse studies with trametinib, so they tried varying doses and found that the 1.44 milligrams per kilogram was the most effective with no side effects. This means a dose of 0.0065 milligrams or 0.26 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. This would be 0.021 milligrams for a human or 1.58 milligrams for a 75 kilogram person. The trametinib was given daily. For reference, the default dose for humans in cancer therapy is two milligrams per day. Here are the Kaplan-Meier curves for the four groups. For trametinib on its own, median lifespan, the time it takes for half of the mice to have died, increased in females by 7.2%, while maximum lifespan was not significantly different. For males, the median lifespan increased by 10.2% and maximum by 15.8. Rapamycin increased female median lifespan by 17.4% and maximum by 16.5%, while males saw a 16.6% median increase and an 18.3% increase in maximum. Just for reference, when the ITP tried rapamycin on its own in 2011, the results were 18% for female median lifespan and 13% for the 90th percentile and 10% and 16% respectively for males. The results are not directly comparable as the testing parameters were not identical, but I thought it good to check that the rapamycin arm was on par with the previous studies. And finally, the combination saw a 34.9% increase of median lifespan in females and 32.4% in maximum lifespan. For males, these numbers were 27.4% and 26.1%. The ITP has also tried two combinations of drugs with rapamycin. These are metformin and acarbose. This table is showing the median lifespan increase for the three experiments. The combination with trametinib is the most effective for females at 34.9%, but for males, rapamycin with a carb carbose is best at 34%. In the study, they also performed detailed checks on health and common markers of aging, such as inflammation, cognitive decline, body weight, etc. This differed by sex in the same way that lifespan effects did. They did see a reduction in age-associated decline of heart function and reduced tumor growth and overall tumor load. Inflammation, both in the brain and in the peripheral tissue, was also reduced, implying extended health span. Side effects of long-term rapamycin are liver lipidosis and testicular degeneration. I have not heard of these before but they seem to be expected with rapamycin. These still occurred with the addition of trametinib, so it did not seem to help in this case. A check on the funding. This came from three research grants, and the authors declare no conflicts of interest. Although this is a mouse study, it's interesting to see a new molecule being tried in mammals and showing in combination with rapamycin, at least in females, the longest life extension so far. Looking forward to the study being peer-reviewed and hopefully the results replicated. There is always a concern that if multiple interventions are combined, they may not be additive and in fact may even cancel each other out. So it's good to see that by thinking about the pathways impacted, the team were able to devise a combination which successfully extended lifespan beyond that seen in either of the drugs on their own. Thank you for your attention and I wish you all well.